Okay, so we'll continue with the memory management <coughs> in classes, and we're mainly dealing with dynamic memory and how to manage it, right? how to create dynamic memory within a class. And <coughs> we do that because we limit the scope of when that memory can be used. And the scope is when the class is created and in memory, and then when the class <clears throat> is removed from memory. So in essence, we've, we've uh, boxed in the memory into a class, which gives us the same ability that the smart pointers have when creating memory for us, right? The smart pointers uh, and string and vector and other standard library classes that use dynamic memory uh, use the same concepts that, that we're using here to manage memory <clears throat> efficiently. So we'll continue. Uh, just briefly, uh, so far we've covered um, a constructor, right? So a constructor is code. Um, let me, uh, I'm not just going to mention it, but I'll show you the code. Uh, let me bring up a uh, good part. So while git pot uh, displays, a constructor executes one time when the class is created. And that's the perfect place to create memory dynamically, right? Because the class goes into the stack and then the constructor is executed, memory created on the heap. So that's what we've, that's what we've done. Uh, and then we have its counterpart or its pair, the destructor. The destructor will <clears throat> execute one time right before the class is, is removed from memory. So this, like, um, I remember, like, I mean, a long time ago, <laughs> when I was in school, like, the, I don't know, maybe I, I was having a hard time with the concepts, but I, I wish the professor would have drawn diagrams of what was going on. Like, he did a good job explaining it. But I couldn't, I couldn't get an image or a vivid picture of memory. I remember like saying, okay, it goes into memory and then it's removed from memory and then memory is created in the heap. And then I was like, so that's why like I introduce a lot of images or with diagrams uh, from my experience, right? Uh, just ho hoping that uh, um, it's uh, a lot more understandable, right? So we have, uh, a constructor, new memory is created here, and that's equal to this diagram, right? Where the class is loaded onto the stack, new memory is created, three elements given to us on the heap. Why three elements? Because we, we're working with three elements, right? Anytime we create a vector, we send in the parameter three to limit the list to three items. And then we... Uh, <clears throat> executed a... or created a construct a destructor which is uh, the perfect place to eliminate the memory or delete the memory because it'll execute right before the class is removed from the stack and right before it's removed from the stack then it'll send the message to our program to not reference the memory anymore this memory is free released to be reused by our program again and then the class is removed from the stack okay and obviously then the program ends and the stack is free, but that's what the destructor helps us with, like cleaning up memory. And uh, it, even though you may not be cleaning up dynamic memory in C Sharp or Java or Python, they have the same concepts. Uh, you write vector, vector, since you're down there. No, remember, we use this syntax to make it part of the class, right? So up here, I did include vector. But we have to use the name of the class scope operator to make sure that this piece becomes part of the class. Java, C Sharp, Python, you may not be eliminating uh, pointer memory like we are here. But like, for example, if you open a file, in those programs, you don't want to leave the file open. So then you open the file and then you have like cleanup code that is executed by those programs to uh, eliminate those resources, right? 
So the thinking there, like you only want the file open when you're going to read or write to it. And as soon as you don't need it for that anymore, then you close it. So, so those languages also follow the same rules, like open, close, right? In this case, we're like create, use, delete. Okay, and then uh, then we uh, investigated the concept of a copy constructor, and that came in the con in the scope of uh, when we create a vector class, and then we want to create a a v1 from v, right? And then we uh, determined that two pointers were referencing the same memory location. That's not what we wanted. We had to rewrite some code or include some new code, which was the copy constructor which uh, initializes the size for v1 um, initializes and creates memory for v1 copy elements from v to v1 and this is the code that does it right uh, set uh, this and then this and then iterate copy from v dot elements to elements and today we will continue uh, exploring some code that gives us memory issues and then we have to fix that code, right? So this new code is we create two vectors, vector v and vector v1. And then we're like, okay, v1, overwrite it with v, okay? And then we'll explore the code and we'll see how <clears throat> this creates an issue for us and we have to write code to fix this. So let's uh, write a test case for that one. Okay, so we go to the test case. And we'll leave that one. Uh, let me see here, what I wanna do here. Uh, actually here, so we create, uh, So we say VF0 equals 5, and maybe VF1 equals 10. This is not new code. This is from last week, but we need to finalize the test case. Maybe uh, some other number. I don't know. I'll just make up anything. OK, and then we say vector V equals V. OK, and then we're like, OK, let's require that V zero equals v one zero meaning like are they both equal to five and then afterward we purposely change one i'll show you the image right now to, so that you can understand what we're after okay maybe we change this to any other number uh number eight whatever and then we say that after that they better not be equal to each other so let's look at the diagram this is from last week's code so if both of them have their own list then let me look at the code we have uh, 5 10 3 so we'll have 5 10 3 here 5 10 3 here if i say v index 0 is equal to 8, then this one will be 8. This one will be 5. 5, so then they should not be equal to each other, right? So that's that's what we are looking for in this test case. Let's uh, go to CMake. So again, uh, some students have asked me, sir, uh, this is not like in the book, right? And well, actually, yeah, it's not in the book. So um, let me see what happened here. Sources given to ex1007. Hmm. I have not seen this error before. Uh, 07. I think that's some code that I had changed previously. And unfortunately, I have to go revisit it to fix it. So let me go here. It's uh, 10.07. That's when I had that issue. I think I need to rename this one here. I need to remove the 7. That's what it's complaining, that it can't find anything with 
ending in seven and notice here it can't right so i had to fix that cmake list okay so now i should be able to go to cmake and now like it was able to read my project correctly okay <clears throat> and let's run this test case not homework uh, i was grading homework so i'm just like memory um muscle memory i guess i was just going straight to to that piece uh, i have that and run and it's building and it's running and uh we're still green which we know is always good but we are uh, looking at the test case so initially they were both five because v0 and v1 have the same number of elements the same values we change one value on purpose we make it eight and then they should not be equal and they're not so if you want to get a very good visual of that uh, i'll go here and i'll write the value so we have uh, five ten three five ten three this one was changed to letter i mean value eight it's not equal to this one so that's what we were doing okay just to show you that we uh, fixed the class uh, correctly okay so i think let me check this piece in okay so i want to check this in before i forget and i'll say uh fix file name issue I'll just check that file in. I'll commit it. That way they go into separate commits. And then this one, uh, finalize the copy constructor test. I'll go in by itself. We'll commit it. And uh, we always want to check in code that's related or that's uh, addressing something, right? So that's why I have to do two check-ins. One that fixes an existing issue that goes in by itself and then the next one finalizing this test case okay okay so then let's uh, explore more uh, code here and we go and execute another test case the test case uh, test uh, create Okay, create uh, two vectors, overwrite V1 with V. Okay, so create two vectors, V and V1, and overwrite V1 with V. That's what we are doing. And that code is, we well, we just do what we say. Okay, create two vectors, V, so that's one vector, two vectors. And now we are saying overwrite v1 with v. So v equals v1. Sorry, v1 equals v. Okay. Notice the difference here. Uh, we had uh, vector v, and then we said vector v1 equals v. So we didn't create v1 like over here. We just immediately created a copy from an existing class. Here we are overwriting v1. Okay, that's the difference here. And we want to explore the output. Okay, so uh, let me run the code and then we'll start diagramming this piece. Maybe I should start diagramming while it executes, right? So let's go here and let's start uh, diagramming by following this code. And then we'll go back to see what what happened with the code so let's see here um, and and as i was saying last week like this this concepts i mean they're not they're not actually i mean the book kind of talks about this stuff but the objectives for this class are for students to understand memory management for uh heap and pre-storage then then we have to explore that right so that um, you get your money's worth so let's go here
Okay, and let's uh, load main. So by now, everybody should know that main always gets loaded first. We don't want to forget, so we go ahead and still do that, right? So, um, yeah, the book the book doesn't does it, but I mean, I want to make sure you all learn this stuff because that makes that makes it easy going forward, easier going forward for you. Okay, so v one, so we have v. And we know we have elements and size. And this is three. We know this is going to be some memory location. Let's go and explore and get some number from here. Okay. And well, from here, you already see that we're like, hey, wait a minute. What's going on? Like, there's some issue. Well, that's okay, right? We'll explore that issue. And again, let me run this again because we don't want to have too much output in here. Eventually I'll uh, enable all those test cases, but we want to focus just on the current test case. That way we don't get so eyes with like, what's going on? Okay. Okay. So we only have one test case. Uh, so we have uh, create memory, 48CO, create memory, 2C20, delete memory, 48CO, delete memory, 48C. Um, without me telling you, somebody should more or less know what's going on there. Just by reading at the deletes. Remember, that they have to be in pairs. And they are, we have one, two, three, four, we have four, we have two creates, two deletes, but the pairs also have to include the memory address. So we have a 4HO create, 2C2O create, but then we have delete 4HO and delete 4HO, right? So they're not, they're not in pairs. And if uh, nobody offers what's going on, we have, we have number one here, we have a memory leak here because that one's never deleted. That's a memory leak, right? And the structure is pointing to the same memory. So we have two pointers pointing to the same memory and I thought we had fixed that. And what we had for this test case here where we create a vector V and then we say vector V1 equals V. But let's explore this diagram and that'll help us understand why we have to add some more code um, to fix this issue. Okay, so what, I'll use the same numbers, okay, that they used here, uh, 48CO, 48CO. Um, obviously completely making the location set, so, uh, 48CO. Again, do the values matter? No, they don't matter. They don't matter. I mean, we're exploring memory. Okay, so 48CO, 48CO. Eventually, they will matter once we uh, finish this example. Okay, so we have that piece. And no, no harm done there. And then we go to V1. Well, let me make sure that we label this one V. Okay. And then we have uh, V1. It has elements, it has size, and this one is V1, okay? Size three is three slots in heap. If that's a question, then yes, that's the answer. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get that number from the example, and we have a uh, 2C20, 2C20, completely making up the location, 2C20, this one, and we get three blocks, three blocks. So then this one's three, and 2C20, okay? And then let's go look at the example. Let's create 
Two vectors, okay. And then we have V1 equals V. Okay, V1 equals V. Okay, so, so what happens when we say V1 equals V? Okay, so this one, right? What happens? Okay, so V1 equals V, then C++ is like, oh, okay, you actually, that doesn't happen. Um, actually, it does happen, so. Let me think here. Yeah, okay. The reason I'm like hesitating, like I know what's gonna happen, but I'm, every time I do this with X's like this, I'm implying or I'm telling you delete memory. But in this case, we're just having the pointer point to something else. So uh, let me do control Z here. Let me explain, okay, control Z. So what happens is then when our code runs, uh, we tell this pointer here, point, well, I should use the same color, right? Uh, purple, purple, right? we tell purple point to that memory. A pointer cannot point to two locations, okay? <laughs> They're not that special. They're not that super power. So in essence, we just tell it point to this one. But nowhere do we ask, do we ask C++ delete 2C20, okay? So then what happens is uh, this pointer here no longer points to this memory here doesn't point to it but we do not delete it so then what do we have here if we don't delete it we just tell this pointer hey you point to this guy over here yeah, we have a memory leak, right? So, so memory. That's why I just didn't want to start crossing this piece out because usually that means like delete memory. But hopefully my explanation uh, helps you understand that we shifted the pointer. We told this pointer to point to this one over here. And that, and then what C++ does, it calls delete, right? It unloads V1, it starts unloading V1. It starts unloading V1. Why? Because V1 is the last one in V1. And V1 deletes the memory. Okay, I'll write here deletes this block here. And then V is removed from memory. And when V is removed from memory, we send another message to delete. And C is like oh, that memory is not valid but nowhere in our code uh, is this block deleted so then we have a memory leak and we have we have to fix that okay so let's go ahead and fix that i know uh the book doesn't go into this stuff right so i don't ask a lot of questions about this on quizzes or in exams uh, all the questions that i ask are conceptual like uh, what does a copy constructor focus on? It focuses on creating new memory and moving elements from the old list to the new list. Okay, stuff like that. I won't ask you to write the code for this. I won't ask you to create a class in the final that manages memory because uh, that's not the class for this. You'll get a lot of opportunities next semester for that stuff, hopefully. Okay. So let's fix this code, okay? Let's fix this code so that it works properly. And uh, we need to introduce another concept 
here. So let me go to the code uh, header. And we have rule one of three for uh, the rule of three in legacy C++. And actually this one here is rule three of three. So meaning now this one is rule two of three. And we have to write some code here. So we're dealing with Let me go back here. An equal sign here, okay? And C++ when it sees the equal sign, what it does is just it just instead uses the constructor for us. How do we know? Well, because create memory, create memory. So then we go look at our code, and it's and it's like, well, which one is it calling? Is it calling copy constructor, create memory, or our uh, initial constructor and it's calling this one okay so we need to fix that and to fix that we can uh, look at this equal sign and we're like well what if when our class when C++ sees our class trying to deal with equal signs we help it understand how to work with equal signs meaning oh we have to overload the equal sign in layman's terms we have to add equal sign functionality to our class. Okay, and that's what we need to do. We need to add a move assignment, uh, I mean a copy assignment overload. So let me explain, right? So we're like, okay, return a reference to a vector, and then we want to overload an operator equal sign, meaning C++, when you see my class with equal signs, uh, do this, okay? And that's what we're telling it. And we're like, uh, const uh, vector reference v. Why v? Because that will help us determine, uh, understand v and v1. Okay, v1 is always a new class. v is always the existing class. Okay, so let me get this and bring it over here. Okay, so that's the return value. So then this is what's part of the class. And we will write the steps that we need for this step or for this code. Uh, I have them here. I don't have them memorized, okay, but I, I do have them here. Um, okay, so create temporary memory for v1, okay? Copy values from v into v1 temporary memory. Uh, delete v1 element memory. You will see how it all comes together right now, okay, when we uh, redraw this. Point elements from memory to temporary memory and five return a reference to vector and the keyword this we'll explore that one let me see four point elements from memory to temporary memory Okay, uh, I'll come and clarify this one because uh, I think it uh, needs more explanation, right? We can't really understand what's going on just by reading this stuff. We're like, oh, what? Okay, so we say uh, create temporary memory for V1. And we're like, okay, so temporary memory. Uh, okay, so how do I do that? Well, create a pointer to an integer, name it temp and say new um, integer of v dot size, okay? And then we're like, okay, so I created temporary memory. Copy values from v into v1 temporary elements. So that's always from v1 to v, and v1 is always the new class. <coughs> i less than v dot size and increment i. 
So here we say elements at index i equals v dot elements at i. Okay. And delete v1 elements memory. Okay. So we're like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, into temporary memory, not elements memory. So I need to temp. Okay, temporary memory. And then delete the current memory. And then we're like, okay, and then point elements from memory to temporary memory. Okay, so this one point VL, V1 elements uh, to temporary, I think this one's just to temporary memory. That should, that's what it should read. Because then we just simply say here elements equals temp. So now we <clears throat> get that new memory, okay? Remember, two were pointing to the same memory, so we have to create memory to give them both their own memory. That's why we have to go through all this work. Okay, and then we say uh, C out copy assignment. display the address so we say elements here new line character that's so that we can get a visual of what's going on okay size equal v dot size i don't think that one's here right so we need to put that here five uh set v one size to v dot size okay and then finally return a pointer to this okay so remember i had introduced this up here and this refers to the class okay so now we're like oh okay so we're just returning a reference uh, pointer to the class itself and we're like yes that's that's what we're doing like we're just saying hey return a pointer to the class and that's what we do here and this one works because an address works uh, with reference right and a pointer is returning a reference to this and that's why this stuff works okay will this fix our issue okay so then let's uh remember we have this issue here we have a memory issue and the memory was that memory issue is memory has been uh, tried uh, it's been deleted twice the first time is successful the second time it failed because that memory doesn't exist anymore so we're like oh okay Whatever, sir, show me. Okay, so we're like, okay, let's show it. Okay, so run in terminal. Let me see here. Uh, messed up the code somewhere. Uh, this one's okay. I don't, I've never liked the C++ error reporting. Okay, so there was no error, so we're just warnings, I guess. Okay, so they're not matched so i need to match him but that's my fault right ah some mouse is so sensitive i forgot to include an sc out statement and it's right here like we're calling delete here so if we're calling delete maybe we should say uh copy assignment right copy assignment uh delete memory Maybe here, uh, create memory, be explicit, right? Create memory. Elements, okay. Okay, and then let me, there was no errors, right? But the output was incorrect, so that's why I'm like fixing that issue. So let's clear again. And now let's uh, see, make, test. running terminal and let's explore this uh, it's just output but it bothers me <laughs> the formatting so let me run it again 
and then uh, running terminal. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have a pair, right? 88TO, 6C2O, delete 6C2O, so that we have a pair here. Uh, create memory at A1AO, delete memory at A1AO, and finally delete memory at eight eight C O. So we we have uh, this stuff working. Let's get to the diagram because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like, okay, what just happened? So let's let, let's uh, go there. Okay, so. And let's uh, see this in action. I think that's enough. Main, okay. Main V pointer elements size is three and let's get a location of eight eight co eight eight co I purposely put them like mixed up so that you it, you can get it engraved in your brain that heap is random that's why i always put them like in not in sequential order as you see them over here i pick different locations to make sure that you understand that they are not i think that was uh the right 88 co okay and that's three blocks okay so then we're like okay so then you point there meaning now you have 88 co purple v1 and well let's emphasize this is v1 v sorry and then we get v1 has elements size is three and let's see what happens okay so create memory 6C20, 6C20. So uh, I'll just pick, uh, I guess, here 6C20. Okay. 6C20. Okay, there. And for here we see. Um, Delete memory six C two zero. Okay, but let's look at the code to make sure that we don't miss anything. Not that one. This one. So before we delete memory, we copy. Uh, let me see. Delete memory. Mm -mm. Actually, we are okay here. We don't have to worry about copies. Okay. If we go back over here, we're taking care of the memory leak, okay? We're taking care of the memory leak. So we're deleting memory so that we do not have a memory leak, okay? So if we go back and look at the output, or actually here, right, we're like, okay, uh, memory was created at 6C20 by a call to a constructor, but then we're like, hey, uh, no, like, uh, we want to delete that memory, right? So it was unnecessarily created. So then we say delete that memory. Okay, so let's uh, note that. So we're like, okay, so that memory is deleted. And maybe uh, I put X is here. And just to emphasize, I'll put here that this was deleted, okay? Uh, delete. Okay, so that, that's deleted. 
we didn't create that memory. Uh, C++ created it, but we're like, we, we don't need it. Like, stop. Okay. So the memory is uh, eliminated, and then we go back to the output. I know this diagram is kind of like complicated, right? But we want to make sure that uh, we walk through it. Hopefully that helps us understand. And then we're like, uh, create memory. And we're like, okay, so, so we'll create memory. So we're like here and then memory is created uh, let me so assuming we get this location here okay one two three slots memory is created we get the number a1 a0 a1 a0 okay and then we're like, well, wait a minute. So who points to that one? We're like, uh, who points to that one? So we're like, well, let's look at the code. That was this memory, right? So actually, I went out of sequence a little bit, but it's okay. In the end, the, the diagram will be okay. It's temp, right? So temp lives in V1. So I'll put uh, temp here. That one's temporary, okay? And then we're like, oh, okay, sir, if that's what you say. And then I'll, I'll use a different color. Maybe I should use this one. Right? Okay, so that one's pointing to that one. And then we're like, okay, and then what happens next? Oops, okay, still recording. <laughs> Thought I had stopped the recording. Uh, copy the elements uh, from V to temp. There's no elements, but assuming there was data, then before this one's deleted, uh, we would uh, copy values, okay? Uh, okay, so we're like, okay. So elements equal temp. We're like, okay, elements equal temp, which means, okay, uh, you pointer don't point to that one anymore, but I'm pretty sure what C++ does is before it deletes that one, it gets this one to point to it, okay? And afterward, it deletes the reference, okay? It's like, okay, I don't need that one pointing anymore because that one was just a temporary pointer. I don't want it to point to that anymore, okay? And then we go back to the code and then we say elements, or elements oh, size equals v dot size it's three so the size stays the same and then we return this but now we have what we want right we have the two lists pointing to their own data we do not have a memory leak and then we should be okay right so where was this memory created that's what we want to understand right it was created um, by by this piece here Okay, it was created by that piece, so we had to fix that issue, and uh, we did. Okay, so create memory, 88CO, create memory, 6C2O, this one C++ created it, trying to help us, and we're like, no, that's not what we want, so we delete, right? 6C2O, and then A1AO memory is created, uh, delete it uh, when V1 goes out of scope and when V goes out of scope then 88C0 is whew, eliminated right so don't worry about the intricate details here like focus on like what we're doing here we are moving elements from one memory block to another memory block and we want to make sure that V and V1 now point to two different memory locations right one thing that you might be asking is sir like we already had memory here that we could use why do we have to create new memory over here like nobody brought that up but what if uh, what if uh, what if uh, one of them is a larger or smaller memory block we don't know right so that's why we're like no let's just eliminate it and get the correct chunk of memory to make sure that, that we get the right size because when we're copying over elements, we have to have the same uh, bytes, otherwise uh, this code will not work, okay?
<sighs> okay, questions? Well, it, it depends, like the question is like, how long does a memory leak last? Like if it's a web server, web servers usually run pretty much every day. So maybe they go down once a month for maintenance. So that'll be at least one month. And if that piece of code's called a lot in all those hours, then chances are that <clears throat> the program won't run as efficiently, right? So, so they are, they're not good. <laughs> memory leaks are not good. Okay, so the next piece, uh, let me bring up the source code. Now we want to verify, the, test this code. So, okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So we run it and we inspect the output. It's building. So we get create memory, create memory, delete memory, delete memory. Okay, so let's uh, diagram that piece. Okay, so we diagram it, we go to the stack, heap, We know main gets loaded. In V1, we have elements, always there. We have size, which is three, and we get the numbers from this piece here. quickly okay uh, six eight CO so we're like okay six eight CO we'll just pick any location we get three one two three slots okay and then we uh, reference that memory six eight CO and then we go ahead and inspect other memory and we see that we have a 4c20 created 4z20 4C20. Uh, so when it says on 4C20, we get three blocks and we have elements. 4C20, size 3. Obviously, this is V, right? And then we have a V2. one in there okay size three but <clears throat> if we're just copying like if we're saying hey create v2 move to move v1 into v2 meaning like eliminate v1 eliminate it uh, and create v2 from it okay that's what we're saying but we're saying move that's the keyword here move so in essence what we want is we want to shift pointers right so instead of creating this memory, we want this memory here to point there. Why? Well, the memory is already there. We're just trying to, to like replace the memory. That's what this means. Like V1's created and then we're saying, hey, V2, uh, steal from V1, steal the memory and V1 will be eliminated. And we're like, oh, okay. So how do we, how do we do that, right? So then let's inspect that. So we do that by introducing the concept of a move constructor, okay? So uh, for now, I'll explain it in the next class. For now, we simply say vector reference, but reference again, that's a double reference. That's called an L value, I'll ex uh, an R value. I'll explain that in the, in the next lecture, but I wanna get to this one. So we're like, okay, so let's make this one complete and we're like okay so what do we do 
and we're like, okay, so number one, we will get v dot elements memory. Steal the guts, okay, steal the memory. Number two, get size from v. Number three, point v dot elements to nothing. Null pointer, meaning don't point to memory anymore because we're going to steal your memory, so you're going to point to nothing. And then set v size to zero. And we're like, oh, okay, so then we do uh, size v dot size elements get the v elements memory. That's what we're doing here. So we, we steal the memory and then we say see out. Uh, Move a constructor steal the memory. Okay, and then we output the memory elements. New line. And then we say uh, v dot elements equals null pointer. Don't point to anything, and we might as well set its size to zero. Okay equals zero and first let's see uh, what, what's happening unnecessary memory was being created and we don't want that like the memory already is already existing like this memory already exists we might as well just grab it right now it's three elements imagine if it's like a thousand elements why create the memory again so we're like oh yeah so maybe we should just tell uh v to point to uh, the v1's memory and then eliminate v1 but let's run the code first okay sorry i had to sneeze run in terminal ah 